Hey everyone, it's Matt here with Kojo. So in the last video, we talked about the octal number system, which was base eight. And at the end of that video, I kind of talked about, uh, or I kind of asked the question, what would a numbering system look like that was greater than base 10, that had more than 10 digits? And so we have a numbering system. I mean, there's lots, it could be anything, but a, a common numbering system that we use in programming uh, that is greater than base 10 is hexadecimal. So hexadecimal is base 16. That means there's 16 unique symbols. Each new position has an, is just an increasing power or possibly decreasing power of 16. So all of the symbols for hex are 0 through 9, like we'd expect. But since we're a higher base than decimal, we need some different symbols. So we start counting with letters. So after we get to 9, we have A, B, C, D, E, and F. Those are our 16 unique symbols in hex. So this table shows uh, the different values for each hexadecimal digit. So we have uh, hex from 0 through 9 just looks the exact same. Uh, then when we, get, when we get past 9, we have the symbols A, B, C, D, and E. Obviously, those transfer to decimal 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, and 15. Uh, and so it's not... Uh, so there are a few different situations where we use hex. Uh, it comes up more than octal. So it, and this here is a pretty small chart. So it's worth just kind of keeping in the back of back of your mind this this little chart if you ever uh, run into a situation with uh, hexadecimal. So just like before, just like with decimal, our our numbering system, and just like we saw before with octal, once we reach the last symbol, uh, we're gonna add a new position and uh, the, digi the digits in the first column are just going to start repeating. So with base 10, we, saw, we know that we have 9 plus 1 equals 1, 0. The first column just repeats zeros. We have 1 in the next position. Base 8, the last symbol is 7. So 7 plus 1 is going to be 1, 0. Same exact thing. Uh, the first column just starts repeating digits, goes back to 0. Then we add a new position uh, and put 1 there. Base 16 is, is exactly following that pattern. It's just that our last symbol is F. So F plus 1 is 1, 0. Okay, so in hexadecimal, we're going to count like 0, 1, 2, 3, all the way up to 9. Then A, B, C, D, E, F. Then we're going to start going 1, 0, 1, 1, all the way up to 1, E, 1, F. And then, again, we're just going to cycle through those numbers. 2, 0, 2, 1, 2, 2 all the way up to eventually we're going to get to 9f and then then this column just keeps going through those symbols so then the 9 so f is the last one so f plus 1 is 0 we're going to add 1 to this column so then we from 9f we go a0 a1 and so on so each digit at every position is just going to keep cycling through those 16 unique symbols uh, as we said uh, it is a positional numbering system. It's base 16. So in hexadecimal, each number is an increasing power of 16. So if we have some number like uh, B1CE, it looks just like the charts that we saw in the octal and, and uh, decimal episodes, uh, where um, it's just, again, in increasing power. So we have B times uh, 1 with three zeros in hex uh, plus 1 times one with two zeros in hex, C times uh, one with one zero, and so on. Uh, this kind of a midway step, kind of uh, translating into decimal, uh, we're doing B times 16 to the third, one times 16 to the two, C times 16 to the one, E times 16 to the zero. Um, but really, we would still just translate those. If this was all decimal, we don't have Bs and Cs and Es. So we just translate everything uh, and do the math. So 11 times 4096 plus 1 times 256 plus 12 times 16 plus 14 times 1. So in base 10, this number is going to be 45,518. And similar, uh, similar to what I said about octal, um, there's, there's certain things that you can memorize, but there's not really a, a pattern. So don't try to find a pattern where um, like 256 
equals this in in hex or uh, you know like b b one c e there's no easy conversion there's no pattern to match this hex number to this decimal number it's really just doing the math every time now luckily the reason that we use these values isn't because we're trying to do math on these things we're going to see at the end uh, some common situations why we might use these uh, it doesn't have to be about counting or uh, it doesn't have to be about counting it doesn't have to be about adding numbers in hex there's just uh, helpful helpful reasons why we would use these but uh, so you don't have to worry about struggling with um, finding patterns or memorizing anything like that it that isn't really why we use it um, but still it's potentially good to know if you're converting between hex and decimal just like we did in that last slide they're all just uh, increasing or possibly decreasing powers of 16 so fe is going to be 15 times 16 to the 1 plus 14 times 16 to the 0 that's going to equal 254 uh, in in decimal so pulling those numbers apart or like kind of like breaking it down more it's 15 times 16 plus 14 times 1 is 254 or 240 plus 14 is 254 if we have a fractional portion we're just doing uh, decreasing values uh, or decreasing powers of 16 so it's the exact same thing here if we have 18 c.5 it's the same thing where it's 1 times 16 to the 2 plus 8 times 16 to the 1 plus 12 times 16 to the 0 plus 5 times 16 to the negative 1 so in decimal we would get 396.3125 and I've just broken it down here uh, a couple more times it's maybe interesting to know uh, on both Mac and uh, on both Mac and Windows we have oh hold on I'm trying to pull over uh, yeah I couldn't pull it over I had, to, I had to shrink down the window there um, we have the 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 calculator the built-in calculator on both Mac and Windows has support for uh, like hex numbers or octal numbers or even possibly binary so we're gonna talk about these up at the top in the view this is I'm on a Mac so I forget exactly how you do it in Windows but you can you can change your calculator so by default you might see the basic calculator you can go up to the view uh, and do scientific so if you want to do things like sine and cosine or just logs things like that uh, you can get a more scientific version of the calculator they also have a programmer calculator uh, and so there's a couple of different things that you can see over here by default it's gonna be on base 10 so if I put in those numbers so if I put in 254 and I come over here to that base 16 uh, you see it is OX F F E Right, if, I, if I'm curious what that is in octal, that's 376 in octal. So we can kind of, you know, convert, convert between these. If, if you don't want to do the math directly, you can always type in a number exactly like I did. So if you're curious in hex what FE is, you can just type it in in hex and then uh, click the decimal and see exactly what that is. A little hint uh, for later what we're going to be talking about is there's there's also binary on here as well and we're going to talk about binary a little bit later but uh, yeah just not right now uh, let's see whoops let me go back to where we were uh, so converting from uh, decimal to hex it's the same thing like octal where we have to split up that algorithm we have uh, one thing we have to do for the integer part and one thing we have to do for the fractional part uh, so um, if we if we have that number we're gonna just use use that number that we've already converted so that three nine six point three one two five in decimal first we're gonna uh, just convert the integer part so that so that integer part is three nine six so we take three nine six divided by sixteen uh, is 24 remainder 12 uh, but in but 12 in hex is C so that's why I wrote that down we're gonna take that 24 divided by 16 we're gonna get uh, it goes in there one time with a remainder 8 uh, then we're gonna take that uh, 1 divided by 16 is 0 remainder 1 so 
the integer portion of this is 1, 8, and then c because 12 is uh, because 12 is c in hex. Uh, and then for the fractional portion, we just keep multiplying the fractional part by 16 and write down the integer part. Uh, and then when we finally reach 0, we take that list of integers from the top, and that's going to be our hex value. So uh, translating that number from before, uh, we already did the 396 part. So we want to do uh, 3125. So 3125, 0.3125 times 16 is just 5. 5.0, the integer part is 5. The fractional part is now 0, so we're done. That one's obviously easy. So the fractional portion is 5. The total integer and fractional po portion is uh, 18C.5, which is exactly what we started with. So that's how, that's how we do that. Uh, picking a more complicated number just so that we can go through the steps and see it is this number right here, 0 0.31640625. We take that number, we multiply it by 16, we get 5.0625. The integer part is 5. We take the fractional portion and keep multiplying it. So the fractional portion, 0 0.0625 times 16 is 1.0. Integer part is 1. Fractional portion is 0, so we're done. And then from the top is our, uh, from the top of this list is our fractional portion. So uh, the result in hex is 0 0.51. Uh, operations on hex work the exact same as operations in decimal or octal. Uh, so we can add, we can multiply, we can divide. Uh, I didn't show the chart here. The chart is exactly the same. Uh, or I don't want to say exactly the same. The chart is similar. It's the same behavior as the octal and the decimal. It's going to look a little bit different. It's going to be bigger than the decimal version, but we can still do all of those same possible uh, operations. And so... Just like I answered in the octal section, why would we learn hex? And so uh, different numbering systems are just helpful at different times. So just like we saw with powers, powers of 2 and octal, there's kind of a nice relationship between those. It's actually the exact same thing. Powers of 2 and hex are also uh, kind, of, kind of related. They're, they're easier to work with if we're dealing with hex. And if we're talking about binary, some of the math that we might do are easier to deal with in hex as compared with decimal. So programming languages do support hex, but it's, it is integers only, so no fractional portions. But uh, all of the languages uh, start with OX. So at, at least all of these languages up here, Swift and Kotlin both, uh, since that's kind of what we're concerned with for Android and iOS development. But they're all basically the same. Uh, it starts with OX. Uh, this can be capital, by the way. Um, so for like things like C++, Java. But so if we do OX, FF, that's going to be a valid um, hex number. In this case, actually, none of this is case sensitive in C++. So these could be lowercase Fs as well. That's, that's really not important. But yeah, uh, C++, Java, Objective-C, start hex values with OX. If we try to use other letters, if we do OX2G, that's going to be an error because G isn't uh, a hex digit. Swift and Kotlin also both allow hex and both start with uh, OX as well. So it's in, there's really no difference there. Uh, let's see. Like I said, we're not really we're not really doing a whole lot of math or counting with hex numbers. Sometimes it's nice to put hex if we know we have a just a really big digit uh, that we want as as like a starting number for a piece of data. We might supply it in hex. We might use the hex value instead of uh, instead of writing out the the much longer version in decimal. That that could be one reason why we use it. Um, a really important reason that we learn hex is colors. Uh, the fact is. Uh, Every system that I know about that I've worked with uh, using Swift, using, uh, or like, let's say, uh, doing iOS development, doing Android development, doing web development, a lot of times what we do is we define our colors in hexadecimal uh, because there's, there's a nice kind of pattern to why we do this. Um, so colors might be RGB or ARGB. 
the ordering maybe doesn't matter, but that's just uh, a red, green, blue, or uh, a red, green, blue plus an alpha. So that's going to be either, typically that's either 24 bits if it's RGB or 32 bit uh, if it's ARGB. And that's because we have eight bits per color, basically. So uh, if we want like a, a fully white value uh, that's fully opaque uh, for a 32 bit number, it will just be all Fs. FF for alpha, FF for red, FF for green, FF for blue. So uh, that ends up equaling 256 different possible values per color. That's what uh, the eight bits per channel kind of means. Uh, fully black and fully translucent, meaning you really because it's translucent, you wouldn't see anything. But that would be all. That would be all zeros. If we're talking about colors that we want to see, we we need to have like a fully opaque uh, colors. Uh, we would have FF in that alpha channel. But so red would be fully red would be FF with the rest zeros. Uh, fully green would be zero zero FF zero zero. Fully blue would be zero 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 FF. Things like that. Um, so that's that's a big reason why we would want to learn hex because defining colors within our program is becomes really really easy uh, another thing that we're going to see later is that translating between hex and binary is actually pretty easy um, and so like i said computers really only uh, really only understand binary so doing that translation uh, and you working with hex is just easier than working with binary if that's something we're going to do um, the number values as I just mentioned kind of up above, the values in hex 00, zero through FF is 256 different values, which, max, uh, which matches that max value for eight bits. So two hex digits, oh, two hex digits uh, fit into one byte. Uh, and then a, an additional reason why we might care about uh, learning hex is if we're debugging and we're looking at sections of memory a lot of times those those memory locations that we're looking at uh, are good are going to be represented as hex values as well so if we're uh, I mean we don't always have to do this there's certain reasons why we might debug memory like this but that's just one additional thing that I have I've done as well uh, so there's a couple of different reasons why we would learn hex uh, colors are definitely the most important you're going to use that most of the time when you're defining colors uh, let's see. I guess that's all now for hex. The next thing we're going to learn uh, now is, is binary. We're going to do that in the next video. So I'll see you then.